Hello everyone, I'm Shorty from Iron Resurrection, and if you ain't watching Rides Done Right, you ain't watching shit. <laughs> Hello friends, I'm Larry with Rides Done Right. We're at the 2019 Roadster Show and I'm with Shorty from Iron Resurrection. Shorty, it's nice to see you. Good morning, thanks for having me. You bet, we've been having fun. We got to walk around the place and this is your first time at Portland. It sure is. Uh, first time at the uh, Portland Roadster Show and I can tell you that I'm having a blast. I mean, it's uh, uh, hardly ever get out here to the uh, West Coast. And uh, for our first time, it's amazing. I mean, I love it. I'm, you know, like a kid in a candy store, really. Well, you uh, came onto the scene on um, what used to be Velocity Channel, now Motor Trend, yeah. and uh, on Iron Resurrection. So I, I kind of want to know the story of how you, how you hooked up with and, and met uh, Joe and Mandy. Did you, you know, how, how that story went? Well, you know, uh, Joe and I have been friends for a long time. Uh, I'm going to say it's the early 90s, 91, 92, somewhere in there. And uh, it's an interesting uh, uh, the way we went about meeting each other. But uh, I was building a truck at the time. I started this truck in '89. It was a uh, '68 GMC uh, long bed at that. It wasn't even a short bed, but that's all I could afford. So I acquired this truck, started working on it. Uh, it took me a little while. I had a day day job, and uh, you know could only work on it in the evenings. And uh, once I got done with it and had the paint and everything, I wanted a mural on the hood. And uh, one of my buddies uh, used to work at a previous place where I did. He said, I know somebody that can do this mural for you. And uh, I said, well, who's that? He said, well, his name is Joe Martin. You know, he's my buddy. And I said, okay, well, turn me on to him. And uh, he gave me his number. I called Joe up, told him what I wanted. Uh, he didn't necessarily want to do it because of what I wanted. What I wanted was kind of stupid. So to per se, but uh, so I went. He said, "Well, yeah. what was it?" Uh, uh, he, so he gave me his number uh, or uh, his address, and I went down there, and I took the hood of the on the truck of the truck, and uh, he said, well, "What is that you want again?" I said, "Well, look, here's what I want." So I want downtown Dallas, all the skyscrapers and the skyline, all that stuff, and I want the Predator in a bigger size, like stomping over the the buildings and fire coming out of them and stuff like that but that's not all so then I want the robotic eagle on the sky with my truck on its claws and the predator is running after it with a, like some kind of big machine gun or something <laughs> and uh, shoot it down you know don't let him take my truck and uh, so that's he, a lot he, of detail man <laughs> That's why he didn't want to do it. I mean, that's a lot of detail. I bet he's wondering how in the heck am I going to fit all this stuff in this? I need a wall, you know. So, uh, but he did it. I wish I had a. Uh, I wish I had a picture of it. And I, you know, I might have a picture of it on my phone. But uh, that's what it was. That's uh, and so he 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 ended up doing it for me. Uh, it took him about a week maybe, and I went down there to pick it up, brought it back, cleared it really nice and all that. Put it back on the truck because I'm happy, you know. But uh, that's how we met. So, so he had seen, obviously, then he had seen your paintwork. You had seen his. How does that then migrate to a point where you guys actually start working together? Is it just more projects come along and you start over the years do more and more projects together? Yeah, so after that, you know, we, we kind of knew what each other did. And uh, we became, you know, good friends. And... Uh, you know, he did most of it at, at home uh, in those days. Uh, he worked out of his house, and I had my shop. I was actually working for a dealership at the time. And then later on, uh, as the years passed, they, they uh, uh, got a building, and then I got a building uh, in 97. I have a, uh, I've had my business in 97. So he moved uh, uh, not too far from where my business was, and uh, they started building bikes, like, you know, not just bikes in the backyard or anything like that, but a professional, you know, for all sorts of people. Uh, so, that you know, he became, you know, he was here and then he just uh, went up the ladder uh, really quick as far as bike building. And so I took an interest of, uh, you know, the design uh, that he did on the, uh, on the bikes. It's very interesting, you know. And so uh, we just took a liking of it and then 
you know, once he found out that I had my own shop as well, uh, he had a few cars, you know, so I started, we started trading out work. So I did his cars and uh, he helped me with my bike stuff. And, you know, just kind of escalated through the years. We became even, you know, uh, we formed a, 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 a tighter bond and, and uh, uh, we began to sort of work together, you know, doing things together, you know, going out to the rallies, bike rallies, and, you know, I would paint his cars, do air ride on his cars, and all sorts of stuff. And uh, it just progressed through the years. Uh, a few years later, he, he says, my brother's working on a show. Would would you come in and do it with us if we get it? So was this like a, a pilot when you say your brother, his brother was... Was he like walking around with the camera and said, let's try no. and put some stuff together or did somebody approach him? Well, what happened is that, you know, they did the biker build-offs. I was going to ask, as did Joe ever go on one of those shows? Well, he went on a few. Because he would have rocked them. Well, he did rock them. Uh, you know, he did uh, a few of them. I'm not exactly sure how many, maybe four or five, I would say. And uh, uh, only lost once. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, after that, uh, you know, we just, you know, the bike deal was up here at one point and then the, and then it just went down. Right. At, uh, you know, everything, yeah. everything comes to an end at some point. Um, after that, uh, uh, you know, he was still in the bike, but that's how he made a living, you know, the bike business. But, you know, during all that time, we just, we just worked together, you know, with cars and stuff like that. Years later, like I said, his brother and, and he, well, it was him by himself first, he said, my brother, you know, kept in touch, in contact with the producer of the biker build-offs, and he's approaching him with an idea of these cars, you know, to do these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to bring you in, he said, because ultimately, you know, you're the, 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 the guy that's been building cars all, all, the, all this time, and I think we could combine our uh, uh, skills together and uh, do something. And, I, you know, without even hesitating, uh, like, I'm in, because, like, yeah, you're going to get a show. Man. Either way, it'd be fun. You know, yeah, either way, it. it'd be fun. I, I, I didn't really see anything. Uh, I got nothing to lose, right? Right. So uh, I was like, yeah, let's, I'm in. Kept me in. He said, okay. So his brother actually, uh, you know, kept at it. You know, kept at it, kept bugging the people up there. And uh, eventually, you know, he would let me know kind of here and there at six months, uh, and we're still working on it, so you're still in, right? Yeah, yeah, man, I'm in. About two or three years later, probably after that, he said, hey, you know, my brother, he got in touch with them, and now they're serious. Like, really? That's kind of the first time I, you know, the, I saw the, the seriousness, uh, you know, in his face about it maybe becoming, right? So uh, uh, I was like, oh, okay, you know, so he said, we're going to do a pilot. And, uh, you know, we're going to present it to them, see what they like, and all this and that and the other. And uh, so they, we did. We did a pilot. He sent it up there. The producer flew down. Next thing you know, we're getting interviewed, uh, you know, for, the, for the, the casting or the characters or whatever you want to call them. And uh, next thing you know, a few months later, we're starting Iron Resurrection. So his brother named the show Iron Resurrection. And uh, got the deal going, actually. It's a great name. It's it's real definitive of you guys and what you do, and 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 the purity. You know, I mean, you guys, you take it, and it. This thing, I, I like watching what it is that you do with with seeing some pretty rust bucket rigs because they they drag home some some pretty bad stuff sometimes, and you got to clean it up. Unfortunately, uh, Larry, that you know that these cars are, don't have a. They're not, they've got barrels full of worms, mm -hmm. not just small cans full of worms, like I said on, on TV. Uh, you know, you take these cars and the, uh, to the naked eye, they look great. Mm -hmm. You know, just about every single car looks pretty good. But once you start working on it, everything comes out. Mm -hmm. Everything comes out of the closet. So uh, it's, uh, you know, if you're not an expert at that, you're not going to see any of the flaws. So. One of the, uh, you know, when I look at the show, uh, I do caricatures and things, and, and uh, you, you guys each are like that. So when they did this this pilot, it's it's an interesting thing when I when I see you and and Mandy and and Shag and and Joe, each one of you have your your looks that are very distinguished. I mean, very distinguishable. You you know, you draw you and it's, you're going to go, oh yeah, that's Joe. Oh, that's Jordy. So. 
it, right off the bat, you guys start off looking like a cartoon, ready to rip, right? <laughs> um, how did you know, an interesting one for me is is how did Mike come into the into the fold there? Because he he looked like he didn't have a lot of experience coming in, but he's learned a lot from you guys, and he's just a hard working dude. Yeah, he uh, uh, you know uh, as far as uh, what Joe tells me, because uh, I met Mike at, right after he. Uh, you know, because uh, I used to go to the shop all the time, right. and then one day Mike's there, mm -hmm. and uh, I met Mike. You know, and uh, it, it just turns out that Mike had, uh, uh, I believe, him or his brother had their own business, like some kind of construction business, and so Mike had some free time. You know, during the day he would set up his guys, and and uh, he could just leave and do whatever he wanted to. Um, so he came around to the shop. And I believe that Joe, uh, uh, from what he tells me, he asked if he could hang around and, and, and learn and, and, you know, just see some of the stuff that uh, we were doing. And uh, Joe's like, yeah, I'm cool with it. So he let him come in and he hung around. He started tinkering with, you know, uh, helping mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Well, you know, next thing you know, you know, he's there every day, you know, learning things and stuff like that. That was in the bike shop. And then... Uh, yeah, he obviously didn't have, you know, a whole lot of experience uh, in that or car or whatever, but, you know, he came in and caught on and, and uh, you know, he, he's learned a lot since then. You're right. Uh, and uh, he helps out. He's, a, he's a, again, another character there that, that he seems like he'd be fun to hang out with. All you guys look like he, it's a genuinely happy, funny fun experience yeah I, I watched that what's it called when you guys do the behind the scenes when you sit and you watch the shows and and uh, you get to talk about them and kind of well I forget uh, what that's uh, called. what is that called the refuel yeah refuel is that what it's called yeah because you, you'll sit down with Joe and Mandy and uh, you guys will watch the episode and it's some of the funnest stuff that's yeah. where you guys do all your life it's real laughing I, I think I yourselves. forgot what it was called because uh, they didn't hardly invite me to any of that stuff <laughs> hey I okay. seen you as, I mean who's there it's always Joe and Mandy and, and they have you, and then they have Shag. They've had Mike on it before. I think, but I do, I do think I've seen you more on it than I've seen Mike. For the for the most part, it was just Mandy, Joe, and Shag. So what's They're camera huggers, man? Yeah, man. What's up with that? I don't know. You know, they, you you see, it's cool how they do the story with with Mandy and Shag going out and finding stuff. Now, is Shag related here? to anybody or how is no, he how is uh, he Shaq is not related to anybody uh, on the show um, he is uh, I, I believe more than anything good friends with uh, uh, Jason uh, Joe's brother uh, and uh, I, Joe's brother uh, you know Ma Shaq was in marketing right it's uh, kind of obvious you can tell uh, yeah. when you see him so yeah. I think that uh, they uh, his Jason thought it would be a good idea to bring him in mm -hmm to do that part of the show, you know, to, to run around with Mandy and, right. and, and, and get stuff, you know, do the talking, uh, do, do the, the negotiating, you know. Yeah. When, when I first watched the show, I thought that, that Shag and Mandy were together. I didn't realize that it was Mandy and Joe. I mean, just watching the show, it was like I just saw them together all the time. And it's like, then when I found that out, I thought, I wonder what Joe thinks about Shag and Mandy always, you know, yeah. driving around to these places. Yeah, you know, you know what? whole day there. You know what, Larry? I'm gonna let you talk to them about that one. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just that one. an observer, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a guy watching TV. I'll, I'll let you ask Joe or Maddy or Shag about that. So, uh, you get into the whole. I, I do know that you guys have done a lot of cars. Do you have a favorite car that you've done on the show? A favorite car that we've done on the show? Oh man. Yeah. Which one was it? The '59. The Cat Eyes. I mean, I think you saw that coming, right? I think I think I might have seen it coming because you <laughs> said it on the show. You said, "I love this car." Oh, and yeah. this was the one where you got to go out on the test. I mean, Joe's always going out on the first ride with it and stuff, and you got to go out with the customer who, yeah, who bought this. I, I think he felt good because uh, you know P uh, Pete, uh, the 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 one that brought us the car, he's real good friends with me. Uh, you, we, me and I are. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say peace and carrots, but you know, yeah pretty close yeah. so we're, we're close friends and and uh, I think that he felt like it would be just better uh, if, if we if I did it with him mm -hmm. so. so he then goes off into the sunset with the car and you watch the car that you built that you're just like in love with now and the one thing that was said on the show was hey if I ever sell it I'll, I'll let you yeah. know first well you know he just lives down the street from me. 
So I knew the car wasn't going far. And if it did, I knew where it was going. Did you make a deal? Yeah. You made a deal? Oh, yeah. That baby's yours now? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. nice to have that in your collection. What's, oh. How many cars do you have in your collection? Uh, well, I have about three or four that are running, you know, that I could just go in there and, mm -hmm. and take for a cruise. Mm -hmm. But then another three or four are under construction, like everybody else, you know, just doesn't have time to uh, work on their own projects and stuff. But hopefully soon, you know. That'd be cool. Yeah. The, uh, did you guys really go out for ice cream in the cater when Cato truck was done? Did you all load up in there and really go for ice cream, or did you just, like, go around the block and come back? No, no, we didn't go around the block. We, we went around the block. You know, there's nothing about around the block in the hill country. Those roads don't have, you know, if you get on that road and you leave, there's really no, uh, you got to go a couple miles before you can even I turn saw around. That. You guys are out in the middle of nowhere. There's like a rock pit or something on the other, the other side There's of you a guys. bunch of rock pits. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, it's a cement uh, digging kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, seems like there would be dust all the time going there, is. there too. Well, there is. It'd be a nightmare is. for yeah. paint and just everything. Keep yeah, paint. yeah, and it's kind of you know, at my shop, it's kind of the same scenery. So a lot of times when they do film a little bit at my shop, you can't really tell the difference between right. uh, you know where the where I'm at and where he's at. So the only thing that we do at my shop is the uh, the body work and the priming process. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we take it back uh, and obviously do everything before that and after that over there at his place. Okay. Yeah. So when you say that you went out though in the Cato truck, so how far did you, did you guys actually go out and go get ice cream or did you just go out for a drive and come back? You know, I don't remember them buying me any ice cream, but I remember going for a ride, like a long ride, because the reason I remember that because we were sitting on the floor in the back. Right. You know, some of those guys had those, those cushiony things. That I saw where up. you were sitting. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sitting on the floor, and, I, and I'm kind of behind the driver, you know, so I'm kind of hiding, you know. Uh, I didn't want to be seen. Was that a uh, was that a setup, or was that a real... Did Cato know about that, or was that the real deal? Did you guys really get a surprise? Because it seems like that would have been pretty hard to pull off. Well, I think, I think that... Uh, I don't think he knew. Uh, I don't think you knew. Uh, um, there might have been some hints of it, yeah. hints of it, uh, or at some point. But uh, his at, mom and dad being there. At the end of the day, you know, I don't think he knew until probably he, until he pulls up and his mom and dad are there waiting for him. But I, I mean, my, during the the uh, build, I don't know if he got a hint of it or not. You know, uh, may, he might have thought of it at some point, but then like, nah, it can't be. You know? So Cato comes out of this pretty good. I mean, are they going to do this for Shorty at some point? I mean, you know, you can't ask them. It's just got to be one of those things that it just kind of happens. But if they do, yeah. you, you kind of got an idea of maybe what the next car should be that, you know. Yeah. If, if they do something for me, they might not be able to get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they would have a hard time with it, too. I, 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 I would just have to play along with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I can say that it's been fun seeing you guys on the show. Uh, and this isn't one of those deals where... I had to bone up at the last minute, and, and who are these people before I go meet you? I've been watching ever since the show came out. I love that you guys have this perfect niche right in the middle of all the other ones that are out there, and I think it's a great fit. Yeah, you know, when I uh, was asked to come into this deal, I was wondering about all that myself. Mm -hmm. I like, yeah, you know, well, first things first, you know. I'm not an actor, okay? I can only do what I can do, and I can't do any more than that. Mm -hmm. So I went into it with a frame of mind that I'm going to go into the shop, do my job the way I know how to do it, and not even pay attention to if they're there. Mm -hmm. Now, if they ask me to do something different, whatever, then I'll have to deal with that at the time. Mm -hmm. So I think it, for me, like it worked out pretty well, uh, not wanting to, uh, yeah, look at me, you know, I'm, I'm over here cutting this piece of metal or painting, and mm -hmm. you're turning to the camera now. Yeah. It, it, basically, it's, it's, I had to do it. I, I thought about it, and I said, you know, just, I just go in there and work, just be natural, and uh, and you know, just do the best I can. But sometimes, what they'll do is they'll want you to retake that because they they obviously want a better angle, right. they want a better, you know, whatever it yeah. might be. So at those at those instances, I struggle mm -hmm. because then you have to act. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not normal. It's not naturally. Because this is what I know about you. You're naturally really funny. So yeah. I'm betting that you're sitting there in the shop and you say something really funny and they didn't have anything rolling and they're going, you've got to do that again or you've got to say that yeah. again. And so now yeah. you have to do it over. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, and that happens a lot because yeah. they're not ready for it. Right. But something happens like, oh, you got to do that again. It's, yeah. it's not going to be the same. Yeah. yeah. But but what I have seen about you guys is you all laugh at each other. So it's not hard to laugh at something that you just laughed at that was funny. And yeah. then when you guys do the refuel thing, you laugh even harder because it just, I guess you know the whole behind the scenes that happened going up. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, we, we do. We try to keep it fun. Uh, you know, everything that happens, like as far as I'm concerned with me, I try to just if we were at my shop. You know, when Joe and I were working at my shop together, it was just a cut up day, every day, all day long. Uh, he, he would, uh, you know, Joe is someone that you kind of kind of had to bring him out, you know. And uh, I would, uh, if he was doing something at my shop or whatever, I walk up to him like, man, I wish I was that talented. Like, I'm glad I'm hanging around you, you know. Stuff, you know, stuff like that. He's like. It's not It's not hard. That man is gifted. I mean, he he, yeah. he has got some great talent. I mean, he's the, between the striping, but the murals and things that he does, they're fantastic. I love how he does their logo, too. The Martin Brothers logo that he puts on is really neat looking. Yeah, yeah. he uh, he, he's, uh, he definitely has a vision, you know, for uh, for art, you know, as far as all those things go. So, like I said, that's what attracted me, the bikes that he was doing, the, the, the style. Uh, that's what it attracted me at the very beginning. Uh, and then, you know, the way we met, he did a mural for me. One of these days, I'll get a picture and I'll show it to you. He, he probably wouldn't. I got to see it. Yeah, that'll be fun. Well, Shorty, we appreciate you taking the time with us and uh, glad that you hung out with us. I hope you get to come back and people get a chance to meet you here in Portland. Well, thanks for having me. And then uh, I want to thank Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne's the reason I'm here today. Dwayne, uh, Cassidy, and uh, and then, you know, the guys at the Icebox, uh, Wes and Wheel. You know, they're uh, gracious enough to have me in their booth uh, all weekend. Uh, it was kind of an unexpected uh, thing, mm -hmm. uh, but it turned out great for me. So it, it, worked, it worked out great for us, too. I had an idea you were going to be here, but as you know, didn't know until I saw you for sure. So Yeah, thank, thank you very much for having me. Yeah. You bet. Well, thanks for watching, you guys, and we'll see you next time.